everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome to this video, which is my second video actually talking about perfect competition and market equilibrium. In my last video, I really focused a lot on the algebra and the explanation about why it's the case that we do certain algebraic things that we do, mainly setting QS equal to QD. In this uh, video, I'm going to be doing everything a little bit quicker and also drawing those curves on a diagram and always marking the, the kind of salient points about those curves. So the example that I will use is just um, a supply and demand curve where Q subscript S, that's our supply, is equal to P minus 4 and Q subscript D is equal to 17 minus 2P. So that's our supply and our demand curve. So I'll, I'll break up the process into a number of steps. I think that there's a number of ways in which you can do this. This is just one way that I find kind of easy and quick, uh, but of course you know, this definitely isn't the only way that you could find and draw market equilibrium in perfect competition. My first step, though, is always to find the equilibrium algebraically. So find Q star and P star. Now, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set quantity demanded equal to quantity supply. Once I do this, I get the equation P minus 4 is equal to 17 minus 2P. So I'm just setting those equations equal to one another. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for P. This is going to give me my equilibrium price. The first thing I'm going to do is just move the P over to the left hand side, to that 2P. So I'm going to plus 2P to the both sides. On the right hand side, this means that I get 17 minus 2P plus 2P. The minus 2P and the plus 2P, they cancel out. And I'm just left with 17 on that right hand side. And then on the left hand side, I have P minus 4 plus 2P. Now, this can be uh, reduced to 3P, since P plus 2P is 3P, minus 4, and then I'm going to plus 4 to both sides as well to get rid of that negative 4 on the left-hand side. So I get 3P minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 17 plus 4. This means that 3P is equal to 17 plus 4, which is 21. Now I can divide both sides by 3, in order to get rid of that 3 that's multiplying p, and I get 21 divided by 3 is equal to 7, 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1, so our p star is equal to 7. So this is our equilibrium price. Now I can substitute that price into either our demand or supply curve to get our equilibrium quantity. So I'm going to do it to both, and you can see that it both turned out the same. So if I substitute p is equal to 7 into our supply curve, I get quantity supplied is equal to 7 minus 4, which is equal to 3. Now let's substitute P is equal to 7 into our demand curve. Well, quantity demanded is equal to 17 minus 2 times 7 now instead of P, which is equal to 17 minus 14, which is equal to 3. So here, by construction, it must be the case that this P is such that our quantity supplied is equal to our quantity demand. Since our quantity supplied is equal to our quantity demand, which is equal to our equilibrium quantity, our Q star is indeed 3. Great, so the second step I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my demand curve. So the first step, of course, when we're drawing any curves is to draw our axes. We have Q on the horizontal axes and P on the vertical axes. Now, I like to draw my demand curves by finding the price axis intercept and the quantity axis intercept. I like doing this because it's very easy and also because usually on exams we need to label all of our intercepts to get full marks. So we might as well find those points anyway. To find the p-axis intercept, I'm going to set quantity demanded equal to zero in our demand curve equation. So if you can visually think about a downward sloping demand curve, which shows all of the different combinations of prices and quantities, well just imagine that in which the demand curve hits our price axis. Well, that's where our quantity demanded is equal to zero. So I'm going to substitute that into the demand curve. If I do that, I get zero is equal to 17 minus 2p. Now I'm going to minus 17 from both sides. So I get zero minus 17 is equal to 17 minus 2p minus 17. The positive 17 and negative 17 cancel out. And the zero, of course, doesn't matter. So I can just disregard that and I get negative 17 is equal to negative 2p. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. Of course, negative 17 divided by negative 2 is going to give us a positive number, right? Those 
uh, negatives, they're going to cancel out. And our P is equal to then 8.5. So let me just uh, mark some points on the price axes just to make it easy. So the next thing I'm going to do is our quantity axis intercept. So if you can imagine the demand curve again, all those different combinations of prices and quantities, you can imagine that when that demand curve hits the quantity axis, that's when our price is equal to zero. So we're going to set P is equal to zero. Now if I do that, I get Q subscript D is equal to 17 minus 2 times 0, which is just equal to 17. So let me put that on my axis. Great, awesome. So now I can join those two points together. I've got my price axis intercept and my quantity axis intercept. I can join those two points together. I'm going to label it D, our demand curve. For step three, I'm going to find my price axis intercept for the supply curve. If you remember, our price axis intercept was when Q, the quantity was equal to zero. In this case, the quantity is supplied. So I'm going to set Q axis equal to zero. If I get zero is equal to P minus four, let's plus four to both sides. And I get P is equal to four. That's our price axis intercept. Okay, so I need two points in order to draw this supply curve so I can get the proper shape and gradient of that supply curve. But I've already got a second point. And that's our equilibrium price and quantity. So we know that in equilibrium, P star is equal to 7 and Q star is equal to 3. So I'm going to find that point on our demand curve. And it seems as though my drawing hasn't been too bad. It could be a lot worse. I can't say that much. Good, that's going to function as our second point uh, in which I'm going to anchor my supply curve. For you guys who are doing first year economics and uh, don't know much maths, you might have the experience that drawing the supply curve can be a bit tricky because um, it's not so easy to, to anchor it properly. You either have to use a slope or go into negative Q territory. That's good. I'm going to label my supply curve S. And that's it. That's my step four. I'm going to connect that supply P intercept with the equilibrium value. Okay, good. So that's how I would draw, find and draw market equilibrium in perfect competition. As I said before, I think there's a, there is probably like a, a number of different ways in which you can do this, but I find this uh, particularly useful because it means that I have all of my points that I need at the end to show the examiner a well-labeled diagram. I have more, all my intercepts, I have the equilibrium, and I've labeled everything well. So I do like this method. I don't dislike other methods, but I, I do like this method. So I hope this helped you. Uh, if you did help you, please like and subscribe. Please leave any comments below. Um, check out my channel for some other videos. And thanks so much for watching.